Coming up in today's rum show, I'm really, really excited about this one. I'm chilled. I'm going with the flow. We are going to be talking about all things Rockstar Spirits. Big shout out to Tom Hurst. Thomas, uh, this is his brand. Uh, your regular viewers of mine will be no stranger to this. I use these quite a lot. They haven't had lots of love recently. The uh, one, the spiced one has been coming out and about. I've kind of niched into rum, but now we're bringing slowly back and bringing this spiced rum. But I'm super excited to kind of chat to you guys today about this. How I'm going to break this down, I've got a few notes up there, but I haven't really prepped too much for this because I don't really need to talk to you too much about the rums. Uh, this show may be very different to what I've done previously because what I'm going to try and do with this show is just give you very, very simple, uh, off the wall sort of inspiration for these kind of drinks because we're not here, when we're talking about spiced and flavoured rums, we're not here to really kind of appreciate the nuances of barrel aging and all that kind of stuff. We are here for fun drinks, fun cocktails. So that's what I'm going to try and do for you in this show. To start off with, we are going to be focusing on the brand new Cherry Bomb, literally brand new. It's not even out in most uh, places as yet where you can buy it at the time of shooting. It should be by the time this airs, but I'm filming this, uh, I don't know what the date is today, 10th? 10th, the 11th, 11th of December. So this has been shoot, uh, shot a good two weeks-ish before it comes out. Um, now, who is Thomas Hurst? Who is Rockstar Spirits? I'm not going to give you, regular viewers will kind of know the backstory to mine, but I have picked up a quite a lot of newbies uh, recently. So just to give you a very, very broad outline of how I first come to uh, encounter Tom. Um, back in, I've told this story many, many times, but back in sort of the zeros, the 2000s, uh, it was all things Sailor Jerry. Sailor Jerry absolutely dominated uh, the spiced rum niche. Uh, yes, you had uh, Captain Morgan's. Yes, you had Lambs. Yes, you had uh, I'm missing one Kraken. Uh, but the, it was you know we, Kraken had a few barkles, but the barkle back then was Sailor Jerry. Sailor Jerry and Coke. Sailor Jerry and ginger. We used to go through so much of it. Every bar that I went to, every bar that I worked at, we just. Tons of it, tons and tons and tons of it. Um, roll forward to 2009, Sailor Jerry, well, tail end of 2009, Sailor Jerry inexplicably, if that's the word, inexplicably, yeah, another word I can't say, uh, inexplicably changed their recipe, changed their formula, and instantly, in one foul swoop, killed their brand. Absolutely killed their brand. Uh, I don't care what anyone says these days, I don't care about volumes or anything like that, they killed their brand. Now, um, basically what, what they did was they tried to, um, they'll kind of never sort of publicly kind of admit this, but what they tried to do was aim themselves at top end cocktail bars as opposed to the pubs, the bars, everyday people at home that were absolutely loving their brand. Uh, so they kind of dialed away the sweetness, which, you know, back in those days, you just had to have it. So they killed their brand overnight. Where does this relate to Thomas Hurst? Well, Thomas Hurst was one of the guys, him and his brother and a few, I, I don't know the actual collection, uh, but him and Matt, uh, his brothers, were two of the people behind Old J, uh, which kind of launched 2012. So Old J being Old Jerry, Old Sailor Jerry. I have got a bottle of the Tiki Fire here. I don't actually have the, um, the proper Old J. Uh, but that was kind of released, uh, as I say, early 2012s, uh, kind of replicating, it virtually did I kind of replicate uh, the flavours of that, the, of the Sailor Jerry of, of you know, of the 2000s. But unfortunately, back in those days, you know, Instagram wasn't that huge. Marketing, you know, we there, there just wasn't the platforms to get the brand out there and it never really took off so much. They just didn't have the marketing, the brand awareness, the brand power to get there. And it wasn't, it wasn't Tom's company. I don't, I don't know kind of the ins and outs of this. It was kind of LWC uh, that kind of sort of had it. But I don't know the ins and outs of actually who owned OJ, but I know uh, the Hearst brothers were very much a big part of pushing that forward. So roll forward to 2018, where we are now. Uh, Hursty did a few other things in between then, but roll forward to 2018. That is when uh, Rockstar Spirits launched Tom uh, on his own. You might know them from, or might know Tom from Dragon's Den. That was 20, I've lost track of time now, 2020, maybe early 2021, uh, but maybe tw I've completely lost track of time. Definitely within the last sort of year, 14, 15 months or so, he was on Dragon's Den uh, to kind of grow his business. So this is where it came from. Now, uh, as you can see here, this is his full range. 
Um, it's going up very. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell you other things. So you can't, uh, whether I'm allowed to say, I don't know. But I have seen other things that may or not be. I know there's one more flavour of that coming, but there it may or may not be rum related coming. But I ain't gonna say too much else uh, about that. We're here just to focus on this. Uh, just to give you the very very quick backstory, um, the back ones behind it. The pineapple grenade was the very first one he launched. That was the one that was made famous by Holly on uh, this morning and you can just search that clip on there because it's flipping hilarious uh, and that one bit is for marketing for months and months and years and years and will do for years to come it's a phenomenal piece of marketing there so go check that out if you haven't seen that I can't put it on here because I, I did try to but then uh, YouTube kind of uh, did it on a previous video it was just like no copyrighted content so uh, you'll have to go and search that out yourself so go and do that uh, that was very quickly followed by the two swallow spiced which I categorically say has always and will always be in my top three spiced rums. I'm not going to say it is my favourite spiced rum because I absolutely love Puss's Spiced and I absolutely love Chairman's Reserve Spice. They would collectively be my top three spiced rums. Depending on the day, the week, depending what I'm fancying it, it'll be one of those three that is my go-to proper out and out spiced rum. So that's salted caramel and citrus. That was very quickly followed up by the cherry. I think I'm getting that right. Uh, I have actually got the order here. Uh, sorry, that was very quickly followed up by the grapefruit grenade. Then the, the two swallows those cherries uh, then we've got the orange and ginger then we've got the passion fruit grenade then we've got the banana bomb and now we've got the cherry now this show I'm not going to focus too much on the two swallows range in fact I'm probably not going to touch them at all I've got the timer running we'll see how far we get I'm probably not going to touch them because a as I said that gets rocked out quite a bit in its own right uh, I will just do a quick side-by-side -side tasting of that because I still haven't tasted that just to compare it but as I say, there is another flavour coming of this soon. And I think I might do another show just dedicated to the two Swallows range um, coming up probably in January, February time, whenever the new flavour gets launched. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's it. So what I'm going to start, I'm going to start off with the bombs and then we're going to go into the grenades and then we're going to go onto the two Swallows. And just obviously what I should tell you uh, before we go any further, what are the differences? Why have we got bombs, grenades and two Swallows? Two swallows are the 38% ABVs, uh, double that, so uh, 76, but um, yeah, 76, God, I'm trying to double that then, uh, 76 proof for you guys in the States. The, the, he's working on uh, international brands. I know some of them, I'm not sure which ones, but I know some of them are in Australia. I know obviously US and Canada is a different minefield completely, but I know these are going worldwide. I just don't know which ones where and that. Uh, so we've got the 38 percent is there. We've got the grenades, which are overproof. It's 65 percent ABV spiced rums, 130 proof, 65 percent. And then we've got the bombs, which kind of sit in the middle, uh, 57. I always think 55, but 57 uh, percent, so 114 proof. All right. Uh, they are proper out and out rums. Uh, so um, we've got the grenades and the two swallows that are DDL. Uh, so Demerara, um, El Dorado, basically, essentially, Demerara Distillers Limited, Guyana. And so we come from there. And these two um, kind of fallen under the radar for uh, quite a few people. They're actually Panama, Panamanian rums. Um, so I'm not kind of sure why, what the difference is, why, uh, why he's gone opted for Panama. Now, I did notice that when I was looking at the banana there, but everything else he's got is DDL, so Demerara. But as I've said recently, I'm absolutely loving the Panama rums. Um, so, yeah, this, that's kind of there. So uh, let's kind of go and put them to one side, the two swallows. I said we'll do the cherry thing in a minute. It's not much I can really uh, tell you more about the brand other than that. I know his mission, is kind of, mission statement has kind of changed a few times. And this is me from an outsider looking in. I'm not saying this was his mission statement. This is what I've associated him with. Very first up with the two swallows and that he wanted, um, for what I know about, Tom wanted to create the most perfect rum and coke. So that was what all this was about, the cherry, the spiced, you know, want to create the perfect spiced rum and coke. So it's still a huge bar call. Uh, and from then he kind of wanted to go on and create the most perfect overproof. That would also be a mixer. He makes no airs and graces about this. The, he loves playing about and mixing them. And before, uh, literally yesterday while we were chatting online and stuff, he's actually sent me a very quick daiquiri uh, and I nipped to Drink Stuff uh, Studios to get the, the syrup because it was my, it was, um, I had it over there, it was Black Forest. So that's actually coming up with the bomb straight away on there. So I'm looking forward to trying that. But yeah, you know, the bombs just kind of uh, fit the things. 
So we'll start off with the first part uh, of the show. So we're 10 minutes in, uh, start with the bombs. I'm going to go uh, flavor by flavor. I'm not going to give you two, maybe three. I'm not sure what the membership content is even going to be exclusive yet, because I say I want to do, we did something very different last week with lots of different mixes. And again, I'm going to do something very different again, because as I say, these are not for the, um, the rum gurus, the rum geeks, if you like. And I mean that in a lovely, affectionate way. These are for people that love fun drinks. Okay, so here we go. The back of the bottle, uh, pretty much the same on all of them. Just to kind of read you out. Uh, Thomas G. Hurst, multi-award winning spiced rum creators delivered again. Cherry Bomb marries black cherry, almonds, salted caramel and spices with stunning Panamanian rum that's aged for two years uh, in oak bourbon casks. For the final Rockstar Spirits twist, the cherry bomb is perfect. Uh, for the rum is distilled at a navy strength of 57% ABV. Cherry bomb is perfect addition to any classic rum cocktail. Mixes with simple mixes like cola, ginger, lemonade, or simply stunning serve over ice. Now look, I have got uh, some Pepsi and some Lil out, but they are purely for a few mixes coming up. I've got a few other mixes down there. I'm not going to faff around with doing the whole Coke and ginger kind of taste on their own because I know how well they flipping well work. All right. They are so interchangeable. Cherry cola, obviously, orange and ginger and cola, orange and ginger and ginger, banana and Coke. It just works. And I've got a very simple riff that I've already done on this channel uh, with that. Same with the banana one. Um, so where we got so the so the cherry marries almonds so the cherry marries black cherry almonds salted caramel and spices the banana one marries banana salted caramel and spices so essentially cherry and almond now uh, I've got that's going to be a new bottle because I don't know where you can see it I've got the other little bottle of um, two swallows cherry there so the big difference being 57% ABV for the bomb and 38% ABV for the two swallows cherry so we're going to just do. Um, I say it's not been you'll see it, it's not been cracked yet. I cannot flipping wait to try this. Oh. Cherry, hang on, let's have a little not a side by side nose in cherry, cherry, cherry and almond. Oh, that's the bomb is much more appealing on the nose. A little bit sweeter, the two swallows. This one. Fun, more kind of sweet, re reminiscent of what I don't know, cherry, like cherry sweets. I don't know, kind of that. Right, let's have a little, uh, a little taste in the glass. <laughs> oh wow! <coughs> Black cherry, almonds. The, the spot. It's not an alcohol burn at all is a spice burn. It's the kind of, it's sort of like the peppery spice coming out there. The salted caramel. That's what I love about that. That salted caramel is a spice note. It's such a gorgeous, gorgeous rum. I'm just gonna have a little pull of that because that first one, I made a few cocktails about an hour ago, but this is my first one kind of drink neat. So my palate's just acclimatizing. Oh, wow. Black cherry. 100% black cherry, almonds, salted caramel, spice kind of hits you. That, would you drink that neat? Hell yeah. Over ice, drink it neat. Just comparing it to the 38% ABV. Um, again, a little bit, a little bit, obviously a little bit sweeter on the nose because obviously it's not as strong. You know, you're nearly talking 20% 20, 20 or at least 15, well, 17% ABV uh, less. That's what you're talking. So effectively, a whole liqueur less. Much uh, tamer on the palate. Um, you don't. It's just it's just cherry and salted caramel on that. You don't obviously. There's, I don't think there's any almond or anything in this. I think it's just cherry, isn't it? I'm sure it's just cherry. Cherries with salted caramel. Oh yeah, the cherry bomb. Cherry bomb. <laughs> oh yeah. Hmm. Oh, that is so good. That, I can still taste the black cherry notes off that. He's done it again. I call him, uh, and I, I affectionately call him, the flavour genius, the flavour maestro. I have never known anyone put together 
combinations of flavours as well as him, as Tom. And he's very hands-on. I know there's other people that kind of do it, but he's very hands-on in there. He, he is. I mean, this spiced rum, you can see the bigger bottle behind my bum down there. It, it's just a genius flavour combination. For me, it is the out-and-out all-star brand. If you're running a pub, bar, events bar, whatever, uh, and you're kind of that, is the out-and-out -out standout brand. Yes, I know Dead Man's Fingers uh, does the job very well. It's cheaper. Great, if you're running pubs and bars, great margins. I get that absolutely get that so when you're looking at price kind of thing and fun drinks i completely get dead man's fingers but if you want to go up a notch create some fun cocktails proper kind of rum proper kind of abv the flavor doesn't get lost it's not cloying it's not artificial it's not fake honestly it's the standout brand for me the grenades the bombs the two swallows it is the standout brand uh, for spiced and flavored rums in the uk there is no other brand to touch it uh, for my money. Old J is getting there, but again, I would classify Old J now, and they've got their pineapple, they've got cherry, they've got their dark, they've got their silver, they've got a few other fans. The Old J are kind of, for me, in with Dead Man's Fingers. It's a fight off between those two. Dead Man's Fingers is obviously going to win that because they've just got the clout. <laughs> Let's be honest. They've got, they're, they're out there in every single supermarket. They just swamp, you know, Old J. Uh, but they're kind of that. This standout, I'm, I think, pretty easy to get online. Most of this stuff, pretty easy to get. It's a master of mole, obviously. Um, Amazon, obviously. Sainsbury's, I know that. I would imagine that um, other supermarkets will be coming along very, very soon. Uh, I know, I'm not saying Sainsbury's carry more. I think Sainsbury's carry two, maybe three. I forget which ones now. But definitely, they will be out there. Um, especially with what he's got planned <laughs> coming up i do believe right so as i said i, I ain't gonna faff around with uh, straight up coke straight up uh lil straight up ginger because that would be too obvious is it gonna work yes i have never had one of these i'm not even sure if these are on camera now to be honest i've never had one of these that doesn't work as a simple mixer whatever you put with it whether that's lil ting uh, gingers, Cokes, you know, whatever. I've never had one that doesn't work and I've tried them many, many times. So rest assured that your Coke, your gingers, whatever you have are going to work a flipping treat. Whatever your favourite mixer is, it's going to work. It's going to taste amazing. So what I'm going to do for you is create um, some sort of fun three, in essentially three ingredient cocktails. The only addition to some of them maybe like a wedge of lime to make it a four ingredient cocktail but this is what i've got a whole list here going through each one of these uh, we're just going to see how far we get without going that sort of over that hour mark so first off as i saying we're going to focus on uh, the cherry the cherry bomb oh, i can't stop honestly mum mummy barman's absolutely going to flip and demolish this absolutely demolishes and i can already think see i've not tasted it i've got a few here and the first so the first one we're going to go with uh if it's there this is what hersty said to me yesterday is like we're just playing about with the daiquiri uh with monin's uh, black forest syrup and i completely get it now so black forest is obviously cherry and chocolate i completely get it Come, I, i'm gonna make it of course i but i don't need to i completely and utterly get it after tasting this and i'm gonna I'm going to do a few of these properly, actually, to get photos for social media and all this sort of stuff. I need to up my content game for this. So, um, right, where are we? Where's my jigger? I've lost my jigger. So, I am going to do... What have we done? We've done? I've not got any measurements here. I'm going to go 45 mil for this. So, 45 mil of Cherry Bomb. Oh, that's so good. You can tell the, ha the hallmark of a great kind of flavour when... Um, it just lingers. It just, even tasting the two swallows cherry, it just lingers. So 45 mil, as I say, it's quite strong, 55%. Uh, so for that, I'm going to go, because they're fun, I go fun, with fun daiquiris, I go equal measures to flavoured um, sort of syrup and lime juice. So I'm actually going to kind of go 20, 20 and 20. 20 mil of uh, black cherry. Feel free, play about with, with this. It's just daiquiri, that's all it is. If you want to go um, less, uh, more sweetness, less lime, be my guest. If you want to go more lime, less sweetness, again, be my guest. Um, but I'm just going to, it's the first one. I know I know. Tom would have been playing about different ratios and all that sort of stuff. I completely get it, completely understand it. 
Um, but I'm just going to go first, get the iron, get the overall sort of flavour to see how it starts, and then kind of you can kind of balance it out from there, all right? So, this, what are we call this a cherry, black forest, black forest daiquiri. All right. Oh my God, wow. Oh, right. We'll she'll double strain this into a Nick and Nora. So this was this was Tom's suggestion. Nick and Nora. Garnish it up with do nice for the colour contrast, the kind of bit of lime peel and like a cherry, maraschino cherry in there, if you wanted to. Fun, fun, fun cocktails. Right, I'm kind of I've got I've got a little bowl there just to kind of get rid of all my stuff so I can just keep riffing without washing up. So cherry, black forest, cherry, daiquiri. Oh my God, that's stunning. Obviously the sweeter end. You could have dialed back the black forest in that. I could have gone, easily gone 15, maybe even 10. 10 mil of that with the lime. Obviously the lime is gonna then make that more booze forward or because sort of the sweetness of there. But that is gorgeous. I, I would naturally assume that the spiced rum community, you've got a sweeter tooth. Naturally assume, and that's not a bad thing. Um, so I'm kind of gearing these recipes up for you guys. The rum family, the out and out rum family won't. The out and out rum family might have done five mil of that. Maybe, maybe 10 mil tops, you know, and um, probably gone 60 mil of that to be fair. But it, it's a very different kind of palate relationship. Oh my God, that is gorgeous. Hirsty, completely and utterly get that now. So morning's black forest syrup. Get out from drink stuff. <laughs> uh, I've raided drink stuff, so I've got a few other, other flavours I've been using on the other channel uh, recently. So we've got that. What next one I was going to? Right, now I have, I said I wasn't going to faff around with um, uh, different flavors, diff the simple mixes, but I have got uh, lilt here. So I've got, I've got fake lilt. I call it, I've got to stop calling it fake lilt because it's absolutely cracking. Uh, I love this stuff. Uh, what glass shall I put this in? Let's go, let's go for, I'll tell you what, I'll make it, I'll make it small. Uh, and if I like it, I'll make it into a big one. And uh, then I can take the photo. I'm just thinking photos. I'm trying to save myself some hassle with the photos. Uh, so we'll go, we'll go small. So uh, I'm just going to do a single shot in there. That'll be fine of the cherry. Uh, and th so the third ingredient for this is going to be um, lime. And I'm probably going to squeeze, I'll use one for a garnish, but squeeze two wedges of lime in uh, for this, just to sort of cut through the sweetness of the mixer. So I'll leave that for the garnish. A couple of cubes of ice. Right. So uh, I, I cherry, cherry lilt, cherry pineapple, and it's and pineapple and grapefruit. Is this is should be a match made in heaven? This. Right. Here we go. And the lime to garnish. You want a bit of the zest in there. Right. <laughs> oh, that's a bit naughty. The cherry really pops through. Cherry really comes through on that. That's great. Oh, that's that's fun. That's a lot of fun. You do not lose the cherry in that at all. You don't lose you don't lose the black cherry in the almonds. That's what I'm getting at. That really pops through in that. That's great. Right. Bit more, bit more ice in there. That definitely deserves to be made up into a highball. Right, now, the one sort of cocktail-ish I did want to do, and I've stolen these out of the drink stuff. Um, they'll be back, I'll be back, I'll be back in, by the time you see these, the, the, the drink stuff, it'll be back in the studio. Because um, I kind of, I haven't got one, and I kind of wanted a julep cup uh, for this. I'm gonna do like a cherry julep for this, which is just very simply, that uh, mint and sugar, maybe bitters, whatever. It's kind of really, really easy. So uh, for this, I am going, I'll keep putting my jigger down, right. Uh, let's do this uh, again, proper full strength there. So 45% ABV, 
uh, 45 mil there, 55% ABV. Uh, I've got some mint. I, found, I, was, I went to Morrison's this week, randomly. I haven't been to Morrison's for months and months and months. I get better ice in there, better crushed ice from Morrison's. Uh, but the, the mint is... Well, I suppose it was better than Tesco's from last week, let's be honest. So mint leaves, we let's just strip that. You want about 8 to 10 decent mint leaves. If I'm going to take... I'll garnish them up properly if I'm going to take uh, photos at the end. About 8 to 10 mint leaves. Palm my hand, give me a spank. Now, the sugar syrup I put for this, without uh, even tasting it, I went straight Demerara. Um, I thought Demerara would be perfect for this, and I'm not going to change my mind either. I think Demerara would nail this. Obviously, I've now tasted how sweet that rum is. I've uh, so not put measurements down there. I am literally going for 7.5 mil. That is it, 7.5 mil of Demerara sugar. Add more if you want to. Um, taste this this is inspiration this is all this is inspiration for you guys to kind of play about and, and take maybe look at what i'm doing and think oh i know what would work in there for instance just off the top of my head uh, i'm not going to use bitters because i was going to do it doing a very simple three ingredient cocktail chocolate bitters we've done the black forest kind of there chocolate i'm going to i'm going to do it with and without actually you know but all right that turns it into a four ingredient cocktail but essentially, um, you know, why not? Chocolate bitters. So uh, crushed ice. And the whole point of uh, using julep uh, cups as, as opposed to the glass is hopefully once you see me kind of whooshing it up a little bit, you'll start to see the, con the, the frosting effect, which absolutely looks a treat on these. So I need, you can kind of see it already. It's already going. But the, I kind of want one for here. I haven't got one. I need one. Right. So let's wash it up a little bit. Combine all those flavours. Don't know whether to stick the chocolate bitters straight in or not. You could go Angostura bitters. You could do no bitters at all. I'm just, you know, pure inspiration. Chocolate bitters. A bit more ice. Oh, wow. That tastes... That tastes so good. Straight away. Right. Um, so, essentially, kind of um, cherry... Demerara sugar, mint. That's all it is. Kind of like a cherry julep. Julep's obviously whiskey based, but who cares? For me, bang on. Seven and a half mil sugar. As I say, if you want to add 10 mil, 15 mil, be my guest. But that was just Demerara sugar. That's all that was. Um, homemade. Um, half Demerara, half um, granulated and then just kind of uh, just water, you know, that's that. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to try it now with um, like a dash of chocolate bitters. Right, so obviously we haven't got the sweetness of that, so it's going to be a very, very different taste in there. That's a bit too much. Uh, there we go. Uh, this is Miss Betters Bitters. If you've got Angostura chocolate bitters, whatever you've got at home, or whatever you fancy buying, absolutely. Let's kind of see whether that alters things. Can you see the frosting effect off there now? Ha <laughs> ha the chocolate really does come through on that. That's really, really good. Ch just a simple julep. Um, cherry, demerara, chocolate bitters, mint. So technically four ingredient cocktail, but the chocolate bitters, once you buy a bottle, is gonna last you months and months and months and months. When you've got the rum, you can make your sugar syrup at home really, really easy. Most people will have Demerara sugar at home. So all you need is mint. It's, it's simple, 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 simple. So there's my three serves. I'll make that look pretty for a thumbnail at the end. Uh, for, a, for a photo, sorry, for social. Um, three, very, very simple. I think in, in hindsight, I have overkilled that with the sweetness. It's a fun drink, um, but I would kind of bring the sweetness back. So what, what did I do? I did 20 and 20. Keep the lime at 20. Uh, I think I did 45 mil. So 45 mil, 20 of lime. Bring that morning black forest syrup down to 10 mil. Start off at 10 mil and then add a bit more, which is the way. I, this is the way I teach. You know, always, you could always add more sugar. I should have done that, but there we go. Um, love that. I love the lilt as well. There were just so many ways you could go with that. Ginger. Uh, I'm thinking, now that I've tasted that, um, what have we got? Maybe like a maple spice. The maple spice is coming out in one of these uh, minutes. 
passion fruit and cherry, passion fruit, cherry and ginger. So passion, um, passion fruit syrup uh, with that and a kind of bit of ginger ale. Um, what else have we got? I've got cherry up there, cherry syrup. Or shout, I'm just trying to think, almonds. Oh, there we go. Uh, or shout, so cherry, bake, even more of a bake. Well, you've got almond notes in there. That would have been another, that would have been another cracking julep. Okay, so that, um, or jack syrup, so almonds essentially, an orange pot, and mint. That would have been a phenomenal drink. There are so many different things. You could literally riff all day on this. Literally riff all day. So um, in the comments, uh, wherever you're watching, if you're watching in the premiere, if you're watching on the uh, on the rerun, uh, comments, whichever way, what would you do? Three, three ingredients. I will allow you like a squeeze of lime, or I've got a squeeze of orange coming up in a couple. Excuse me. I will allow you that as a fourth ingredient. Uh, but what are you kind of going for for three ingredient cocktails? You've got bitters. Let's go for um, It's just, and this is what I love. I love rum. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love rum. But I do. I do love my spiced and flavoured rum because they are really, really fun. Really, really fun. So that's Cherry Bomb. Um, I'll do some more for social media, especially over Christmas. But absolutely flipping love that really really tasty um i'd quite happily drink that R cherry old fashioned you know a bit of ice bitters a tiny 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 bit of sugar that is cracking right where are we we're uh, roughly about 32 minutes in so let's flip over to the banana bomb um again i don't really need to tell you uh, too much about the banana bomb i've already done it uh, but i have got some cocktail serves that i'm going to do for you so uh, banana ball. I'm going to do. I'm going to do in a different order. The first one I'm going to do. Uh, this has to go. Shout outs to Pratesh uh, Modi who first did this on uh, Sunday brunch, and it was actually banana bomb. The thing with uh, as I've done a couple of times on my channel, uh, I've riffed it up very very slightly because Pratesh used a coffee cola, uh, and I still, even though that was possibly, I don't know, where are we? Six months ago? Five months ago? Still to this day, not seen a coffee cola that I can get really, really easily. So I kind of riff this up very, very uh, loosely. I'm doing 45 mil of, and this is still one of my favourite highballs, 45 mil of banana bomb. You can go 60 mil, double bubble if you want. I've did just stronger ABV. So I've done that. Now, uh, obviously the change is now coming because I've swapped over to a Luna from Mr. Black. So I'm going for a Luna. Um, but that subtle, ever so subtle coconut edge to it, but hands down for me now, the best coffee liqueur on the market. As I say, I refer you back to the blind tasting I did on my live show, which wasn't rigged. I had absolutely no idea because I actually picked this out as Mr. Black. <laughs> and then when I went back to taste Mr. Black after I was just like, oh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's really good. I totally didn't get the coconut on there at all. First off, totally didn't, but absolutely gorgeous. So going 15 mil of um, a Luna coconut, uh, and then I've got my Pepsi coming out there. Was open last night, so it's a little bit fizzy. Uh, I just need a little bit, but not too much. So, a little bit fizzy. I don't think you need to garnish this with a, a squeeze of lime, you can do if you want to, but I generally don't think so. So, uh, as I say, props to Pratesh for this one, so kind of like um banana coffee and coke but it kind, kind of well it's not i was going to say kind of loosely related to the dirty banana it's not but you know we know that it's sort of banana and coffee works well together but still to this day one of my favorite oh it's quite fizzy actually one of my favorite highballs actually <laughs> that might be better for i could open a coke the night before that might be better for me for my stomach to stop the burps that's a great one right Love that. So banana coffee coat, phenomenal. Drink that. You can. Can you drink that neat? Yes, of course you can. Let me let me just do the tasting for you because I haven't really. Uh, if for those who I'm I'm sort of thinking. Oh yeah, you've watched the videos that I've done, especially one just before I niche down into rum, <laughs> where I kind of had the dead man's fingers uh, banana there, and it was like I'm not going to use that because that is terrible <laughs> absolutely and i still stand by that it's dead man's fingers worst flavor that they've ever brought out that banana it's terrible it's a great caramel rum terrible banana rum terrible right uh this it just punches through ripe banana 
you know, it's just... You don't lose the salted caramel and the spice note, but it's just like ripe banana in there. It's stunning. Right, how much, uh, which one are we going for? I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do daiquiri, actually. I'm going to do daiquiri. Right, uh, let's do... Let's do this as a daiquiri. So this is a crazy daiquiri coming up here. It's another syrup I've stolen out of the, um, the showroom. Right, 45 mil of banana bomb. Uh, I've got another Nick and Nora there, so that's going to be cool. Uh, 45 mil of that. Right, can you guess the syrup? He says. Dun, 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 dun. Pina colada syrups, like pineapple and coconut syrup, all in one. It's cracking. Uh, so you can easily pick this up from drink stuff. Uh, so I'm going to do what I did, did for that. I'm going to dial this back. I'm going to go 10 mil straight off. I can add more, but I'm just going 10 mil for that. Uh, and then I'm going to go 20 mil of uh, lime juice. So essentially two and a half, one half. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> two, two and a half <laughs> to where they are. So two and a half, one half. Up that to three if you want to. But two and a half, one half. That's kind of the ratio I've done for this daiquiri. And uh, that's the pina colada syrup. Let's get a bit of ice. Right. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Shaky, shaky, shaky. So uh, banana and pina colada, banana, pan, banana, banana, banana colada daiquiri. There we go. Oh, that's okay. And welcome to the world of the creator. I've just had a camera malfunction. I absolutely pooped myself because I thought 40 minutes of content had just gone down the pan. But I've managed to save it. Uh, I kind of looked at it and exactly where I was was shaking the cocktail, shaking the daiquiri down. Um, so I've just kind of, it's given me about 15, 20 minutes probably just to kind of um, remake them and take kind of have a little photo shoot there. So I've redone all of these. I've prepped that, I've garnished that and I've done this, the pina colada. This is what I was making just before that. We've got the, sorry, the banana colada daiquiri. Um, phenomenal, really, really good. Uh, as I say, I, I just started up, it was about half an hour ago, but I made it now, at least at least 20 minutes ago. Um, but from what I remember, it was slightly less, slightly less. So I, I, what did I do? I think I did two and a half, one half. I think that's what I said, didn't I? Uh, for that, and it just works a treat. You will see it. It will literally be seconds for you. But for me, it was a good 22, 23 minutes ago. But this is absolutely glorious. So um, what I'm going to do now, that was your banana inspiration. I've done plenty of banana cocktails on my channel, so there's plenty there. And what I'm going to do now is just put these in the fridge and then we're going to swap straight over to the grenades. Right then, so a uh, big round of applause. Uh, I say, I, you know I love the long-term loyal viewers of mine will know I absolutely love the banana bomb there. Uh, the cherry bomb is phenomenal. Uh, really, really, the black cherry and almond, really, really love that. So I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm, I'm going to up my content game. Uh, it probably won't be videos. It might be posts, whether it's on my community feed in YouTube. If you haven't checked out my community feed yet on YouTube, go and do it. Um, sometimes it pops up. If you're on mobile, sometimes it will pop up on the YouTube home feed. But if you're on desktop, you have to make a conscious effort to go over to my community tab. So that's where... I post a lot of stuff actually. I'm probably going to live on like more and more recipes on there. Well, some will go to Instagram as well, but YouTube hasn't, you don't have to worry about algorithms. It's just all there. So um, go and check out. There'll be more content over the next sort of year or so going on there, really making a conscious effort of that. Right, uh, the grenades. So we've gone from 55 to 57, where are we? 57% ABV to 65% ABV. Absolutely blinding. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about these because obviously uh, I did at the top of the show, but this was the one that got Holly Willoughby, Holly Willoughby's eyes uh, popping out of her head. It's, it's an awesome clip. Go and look at it on YouTube. Pineapple, salted caramel, spice for a 65 percenter. It goes down way too easily. Way, way too easily. My favourite out of the three, and that's not, it's not discounting the other two by a long shot, but that is my favourite out of the three grenades. 
Uh, I love it. It was the original one. Uh, and I have to say, the grapefruit is actually really, really good. But for some reason, grapefruit doesn't get a lot of love in the UK. But it's really, really good. So, <coughs> oh, so apart from drinking them neat, how else can you drink them? Right, so I've got a couple of little things here to go. Let's just pop them to the side. They might not be on shot, but there we go. So, start off with the, with the uh, pineapple grenade. I'm going to go for a daiquiri again. I need some more Nicanora glasses. Drink stuff. Uh, so I'm going to surf it up in that, but this one's a little bit crazy. I don't know whether this is going to work. I, th I have generally no idea, but I thought, who can I give some love to in this video, apart from Monin? So let's go George. George, William Fox. Uh, haven't opened this syrup yet, as you've just maybe just have heard that cracking. Uh, hibiscus syrup? I, I don't know. I genuinely don't know how this is going to work. But in my head, it should work. Now, uh, these are a little bit stronger, so you might need a little bit more sweetness going in here. I did two and a half, one half for the last daiquiri, that being the banana colada daiquiri. In my head, I don't know. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do 10 mil of hibiscus, uh, which will be 20 mil of lime juice. Uh, and then I'm going to go for um, this. This is done. I'm running low of this. I need to get another bottle of this. Uh, and I'll, in, in all honesty, uh, so 45 mil there. I mean, Hursty has been very, very good to me. He's sent me a lot of stuff here. And that's not, you know, you know, nothing to do with that. It's just I love his stuff. He knows I give him a lot of love when I do cocktails and stuff like that. It's, it's, just, it's just how he's not paying me for anything. It's just, you know... <laughs> I flipping love his stuff. <laughs> I love him to bits. <laughs> he, as I say, he's the god. He's the godfather of like flavoured spiced rums. He is. There is no one with a palate quite like his. I will say that's right. Um, I still love to see him do a coconut. I, I kind of put that idea forward to him. Um, the next one coming's not coconut, but I'd love, absolutely love to see a coconut. A, whether it's a bomb, whether it's a two swallows, whether it's an overproof, I would love coconut overproof. That could be interesting. I would flipping well love to see a coconut spiced rum. I whether that will work or not, I don't know. And there's obviously a reason that no one's embarked on the coconut spiced rum route as opposed to just plain coconut rum. But that would be if anyone could pull it off, Tom can. So right, there's a challenge, Hursty. There's a challenge. <laughs> I want it done by rum by um, oh I was going to say NRB uh, rum Manchester Rum Fest. I'll give you till uh, June twenty twenty two. That's that's your challenge. A coconut spiced rum, whether it's a bomb, a, a grenade, or two swallows. I think I prefer me personally. I prefer a bomb or a grenade, but you know I leave it down to you. I want a, a coconut spiced rum. That's what I want. <laughs> right. So. Hibiscus, I've no idea if this is going to work, uh, but hibiscus uh, and pineapple daiquiri. I say this glass is a little bit too big um, for Dax, but it'll be all right. I'll, I'll elongate If it's nice, I'll elongate it for a photo. Right now, George at William Fox is hoping it tastes really nice because he wants a bit of love on, on uh, Instagram feeds and stuff like that. So uh, hibiscus, pineapple hibiscus daiquiri. I don't know. Oh, hell yeah. Wow. Hell yeah. Oh, my word. Some of you are going to want that a touch sweeter. Wow. That is... I have got... I can't quite... Yeah, I can. So it's the rose down there. I have got monins there as well which is a lot deeper red in colour, um, hibiscus. Uh, but I want to give George some love. I love George. Uh, we're all about sharing the love in here. And, you know, he's up north. Hursty's up north. Um, that's good. I, I had no expectations for that at all. The pineapple shines through, the salted caramel. But the floral notes of the hibiscus, the, the sort of tropical floral notes, that is really, really good. Right, uh, what else was I going to do? Uh, I'm going to do, so this is a highball now coming up for this one. So let's put that away down there. Uh, the highball coming up 
is, let's put it in this one. Uh, should be kind of fun and easy. I'm going to crack out the uh, the pineapple granola. Oh, look at that. It's my favourite one. I need to buy another bottle of that. Uh, I'm going to crack out this. So membership community, I've seen the time. I now know exactly what your content is going to be. I haven't, I haven't even filmed it yet. But I know exactly what's coming up. Because <laughs> there's a lot more recipes here. <laughs> so we've got that. I have gone maple spiced syrup here uh, and I'm just going 10 mil of this maple spice so 45 mil of pineapple grenade um, uh, 10 mil of maple spice from Monin but the mixer I've got is and, and stay tuned for a second because uh, I'm going to flip straight over to the grapefruit in a minute and I've got an I cannot wait to do this in a second this one next one coming up is a bit crazy um, Got, I've got a passion. I've got a passion fruit in the fridge for a photo. So, uh, passion fruit, pineapple, maple spice. Again, no rhyme or reason. Um, I just thought, I just want to showcase how you how easy it is to put stuff together. Uh, you could go. I've got a wedge of lime, um, so that could be your fourth ingredient. Oh, I don't think it... I'll tell you what actually worked work on there. Orange. Oh, that's good. The caramel and the maple. That's really, really good. That's fun. That is super fun. Cocktails do not have to be technical. That's amazing. Yes. Round of applause, Mr. Barman, for that one. Crazy. This is how easy it is to put flavour combos together. I, you know, people go, how do you do it? Just flipping play about. Right. Um, grapefruit grenade. Let's go for this one. The one that probably hasn't got the love it deserves from me on this channel. And I cannot wait for this one. This one deserves to go in a, a decent glass like that. Um, so let's see. This is kind of like a spritz, spritz serve. So, um, bear with it. it mate, you... But no, you wouldn't shake this up. So grapefruit grenade, uh, grapefruit. Let's go grapefruit. Let's pop that in there. Grapefruit. I say it's the it's the one that I just don't give the love to. And I sh because now tell you what, I remember doing Captain Morgan grapefruit, and I, it was a US import, obviously, and it was phenomenal in fun. It was just fun. I was just like, oh, grapefruit. I'll get it, you know, just for the crack. It was so good, and this one. All those proper spiced rum, you know, grapefruit spiced rum. This, oh, it's kind of the forgotten about spirit. This would be interchangeable in so many tiki rum, proper out and out rum tiki cocktails. It's unbelievable. Grapefruit forward, you still get the salted caramel because it is salted caramel. It has to be. Ah, oh, honeycomb, that's what it is. Honeycomb, sorry, it's not salted caramel, it's honeycomb. You get that taste. You get that kind of sweet, sweet sort of taste to it. Oh, it's, it's so good. Oh, my word, that's good. Right. Apologies for the salted caramel. You're, you're, when you taste it, you'll kind of get what I mean. Honeycomb and grapefruit. Again, this is why I call him the godfather of flavour combos. How the hell do you come up with grapefruit and honeycomb? Jesus, that works. Right, so this one is going to be all shades of gravy. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to cry. But I really want this to work so badly. I really, really, really want this to work. So, grapefruit grenade. Yuzu from my friends at ODK. Let's go for it. 15 mil of yuzu puree. 15 mil. So yuzu oriental kind of citrusy, cross grapefruit, lemon-ish kind of thing. Drink stuff if you want to get hold of that. It was one of my favourite puree, fruity mixes, syrups, and thicker syrups than that, essentially. Now, where are we going for this? Why have we gone spritz glass? This is a new mixer to me. I have rolled it out a couple of times. It's good. 
not even going to bother measure. I'm just going to pour. I reckon potentially 75, 100 mil. Give it a stir, obviously, to combine all the ingredients. Because the yuzu... I've got the, I've got the gas now. The yuzu will, is a thicker kind of syrup. I'm, I so want this to work. I so want this to work. I think this could be a genius combo. The aroma. Oh my god. That, oh my god. That's good. The aroma. Yuzu. Grapefruit. You get that sweetness. I'm not automatically saying you get some kind of like toffee. I get now you say it's honeycomb. I kind of for, I completely forgot it's honeycomb. But you kind of get that sort of sweetness. Bitter, sweet, that is such a great mixer. Big, big fan of that. Italian blood orange soda. It's not sweet because it's soda. That is so good. That is so good. Uh, oranges, sprig of mint, I'll make that, I'll pimp that up for a photo. Yes, that, love that. Uh, I'm going to try and race through these now because I'm getting towards the end and I don't know how much of a cut off. I can see 55 minutes on there. I think I've probably got a few minutes to leeway. Um, so I've done that. I've done that. What was I going to do? Not that one. That's going membership, which I'm going to film straight afterwards. Old fashioned. Let's go straight in the glass for an old fashioned. So grapefruit grenade, old fashioned. Um, let's pop that away. That's really, really right there. Blood orange Italian soda. Oh, that's going to be a staple. That's going to be a staple. Right, 45 mil of grapefruit grenade. We do want a little bit of sweetness in here. Now, I've gone at vanilla. Now that I know that's honeycomb, my head's going honey. So I'm actually going to do a last minute detour towards honey. I don't know why I put vanilla. You could go vanilla, but I'm just going honey. Just for the crack. I'm going 10 mil because it's a strong rum. 10 mil. Bear in mind, you can drink that neat as well. Now, for the bitters, because one of my favourite, and the inspiration came from this, because one of my favourite mixes, I've already featured it quite before, is Tropical Blast, pineapple and grapefruit. So, bitters, most of you have guessed it already. We're going Miss Betters, pineapple and star anise. Just a couple of dashes of pineapple and star anise bitters there. We're going to give it a little stir. Uh, garnish grapefruit peel, um, whatever, really for this old fashioned. Do it with a big, a decent chunk of ice. And now I'm, I'm on supermarket ice at the moment. Uh, maybe a bit. It was, it was wet. It was wet ice. I don't need to faff around with this at the moment. But there we go. Wet ice. So we've got to save it up a little bit better than that. But grapefruit grenades, honey, pineapple, and star anise bitters. Old rum, old fashioned rum, grapefruit, great. I don't know, grapefruit, honey, old fashioned. What are you calling it? <laughs> oh, if you're listening to this and not watching this, my my little face is just lit up like a flipping Christmas tree. Oh dear God, that's insanely good. The star anise really comes out on the bitters. The pineapple notes really come out, but the pineapple notes really come out. The honey is a good choice for that, actually. That. Oh, they're great. I need to do more work with it. I'm going to. I'm going to. I need to do more work with the grapefruit grenades because that's a really good uh, kind of spiced rum. Um, phenomenal. Right. Passion fruit. Let's move on to the passion fruits. Put the yuzu away. Uh, passion fruit, last few minutes of this. Hopefully we're not going to run over too much. It's, it's ticking up to an hour now, but I've, I reckon I've got a few minutes uh, to kind of play with. So the passion fruit. Right, uh, this one is a DAC. Yes, I'm going to definitely do this one. So another DAC. I've got no DAC glasses. Drink stuff. I need some more Nick and Nora's. Uh, so we're going for one of those. Um, right, passion fruit. Uh, grenade. So this is salted caramel. Uh, and I'm going to go 45 mil of that. Four or five. Simple three ingredient cocktails. That's all we're doing. 
We are doing, wait for this, wait for this sweetener that's coming in for this. I've got high hopes for this. Uh, very high hopes for this. Uh, sorry, George, it's not you. Um, I'm going to go 15 mil, just for the crack. 15 mil of lime juice. I'm trying to get these right first time. You know, most bartenders would make 10 of these and go, oh, yeah, that's the best recipe. Uh, but I'm trying to nail these first time, so hence my deliberation. Right, this is the one I've stolen out of Drink Stuff showroom. I gave Mummy Barman a little uh, spoonful of this. She went, her eyes just went, uh, Winter Spice from Monim. Also, I can really tell you, ginger, cinnamon, chili, chili, uh, clove, nutmeg. I've got no flipping idea of what those two things are. The green things. That's green and that's um, green and pink. No idea. It doesn't really help me on the back of the bottle. Uh, Lee did tell me when he came in and filmed. Um, but yeah, I've got, I've got no flipping idea of what that is. But it's such a great, great syrup. So I'm going to go 10 mil. 10 mil of winter spice um, syrup. So we've effectively done, should have done two and a half, two and a half, no, what have we done? 45, yeah, no, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know what we've done here. You'll be able to work it out and uh, shake it up. So back, back time. Passion, winter, winter passion daiquiri. I don't know, what are you gonna call this? Nothing if it tastes flipping horrible. <laughs> it's not going to I'll back myself. It's not going to taste horrible, is it? Of course it's not. I've never made a horrible drink in my life. Never. I wouldn't do such a thing. <laughs> right. Here we go. Excuse the glass. I kind of like, like these glasses, to be fair. Nick and Nora's are better, obviously. Right. So, passion fruit, winter spice, and lime. Dac. Daiquiri. Wow, the, the the nose. I love these rums. I didn't do a taste of that meat, did I? <laughs> so, Monning, ODK, and William Fox. And there are other syrups, are other kind of, I'll say, it, inferior syrup companies out there. Uh, oh, Giffard. I don't do much with Giffard syrups. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. I've tried a few of them, but I've. I have to give UK Giffard nail it for liqueurs in the UK, but for syrups in the UK, I have to give the love to Monin and George at William Fox and ODK. ODK need to up their game slightly because we do a lot of work with them at Drink Stuff, obviously. But they need, they need to up their social game and interaction game a little bit more. Uh, but Monin. You know, Monin are all over it. George at William Fox is all over it. Um, that is phenomenal. They just make, what the whole point of that was, they make your cocktail and easy drinks life so flipping easy. That is amazing. Passion fruit, you get the spicy notes, you get the wintry notes off that. I would, I would drink that in the flipping summer. That is amazing. What was the last one I was going to do? Oh yeah, very, very simple highball to finish off. Very, very simple highball. Uh, hopefully I've got, a, this is going to be a low ball. <laughs> I'll make it bigger because I know this is going to work. I'll make it, I'll, I need to get some more ice out, but I won't faff around. I won't hold you up. So uh, a low ball with some uh, mango and passion fruit grenade because passion fruit and mango, J2O's, you know, think of J2O. Passion fruit, mango and passion fruit. Of course it's going to work. So we're going, yeah, because I can use this in there. We're going 45, oh, that's going to be big, isn't it? I better do a little one to start off with. Uh, let's just do that. And I'll do a little, because I haven't had a little sample of this yet, just to kind of tell you. So just kind of a little a little sample of that. Uh, I have got tiki bit. This was the third ingredient. Right, so three ingredient cocktail, tiki bitters, which are those bitters. But I need to find you that so you can see. Bitterman's Elamakuli Tiki Bitters. Uh, you need those in your life. 100% need those in your life. Cinnamon, clove, allspice. Uh, God knows what else in there. Uh, God knows what else in there. Just kind of Caribbean island spices. 
do a little dash and mango Rubicon because we need to give Rubicon a bit more love. I can't believe I didn't have guava. I couldn't do a guava cocktail, but I didn't have guava. Stir. I don't think this will need. Add a squeeze of lime, by all means. Oh, they got. <laughs> The, oh, yeah. Um, where where do I start? Rubicon mango. The, then the rum comes up. That's how that's how this plays out. Rubicon mango. Did I just use the pot? I don't know what. No, I must have used that. Surely I must have used that. I'm just thinking. Hang on. Why is that there? Um, whatever. <laughs> whatever. The mango comes out. I get that kind of the sp this ca the spiced rum, the rum notes hit me on there, the fruity notes. I'll be honest, passion fruit and pineapple, they're both going to work flipping e equally as well in that. I'm, ba I'm backing myself that I did that. But then you get the aftermath, you get those tiki bitters, the cinnamon, clove and allspice. That's good. Right, neat. Yes. A couple of minutes of silence. I have to say, right, I love passion fruit. Openly and honestly, and I, I don't, look, I've given Hursty a lot of love. I've got to keep it real. That is my least favorite. Out of the five that I featured, and I might have gone over a couple of minutes, 107 on my thing now. I reckon probably 102. I'm going to finish right now. Out of the five that I featured tonight, that's probably my least favourite neat. The passion fruit grenade. And that's, you know, people, and that's me saying you need to get involved in the in the grapefruit one even more. If you're not, you need to because the grapefruit one smashes it hands down. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that show. As I say, it might be a long one, uh, this one. Hopefully it won't be too much over there. A uh, very, very different kind of show for you tonight. Lots of inspiration. I just wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, bearing in mind it's Christmas. So if you're watching this, oh Jesus, if you're watching this now, 23rd, happy Christmas. If you're watching this in the middle of summer, happy flipping summer. But this will come out on the 23rd of December 2020, 2021. Uh, Merry Christmas. Poss there will be a video. I'm, I've, I've video i filmed way advanced so there will be a video out on christmas day but sod it merry christmas i uh, hope you've enjoyed it thank you for all your love so far for your discord community uh for my legends i'm gonna do you i'm gonna follow up this now i haven't started i'm gonna follow up now i've been in the studio another five hours already hursty thank you so much for your love to me but a genuine thank you for what you're doing for the spiced in the community, the spiced in the flavoured rum world. Because I think without your brand, whether that's but up bombs, grenades, swallows, I think without your brand, I think the spiced rum world is a very, very dull place. And uh, and I know I'm blowing the smoke up your backside, but um, keep going. And don't forget the challenge: coconut spiced rum. If you could do it by NRB. Uh, do it by NLB, but I will give you leeway until uh, Manchester Rumfest, June 2022. Coconut spiced rum.